What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in our video. It's one of about how to get an answer from God. So many people ask me this question, so I have some scriptures to go over. I have a lot of scriptures to go over in this video. So let's get let's go. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. So the number one way to get an answer from God is to seek confirmation through the Bible, through His Word. Okay, this is a good scripture. This is in Deuteronomy chapter four, verse twenty-nine. I made this first because this isn't. We should all be doing this, whether you want to answer or not. So it says, "But if thou." From thence shall seek the Lord with thy, thy God, thou shalt find him if you should seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay, so when you're sending your mind on God alone and you're seeking his heart with, uh, with all your heart, sorry, with all your heart, with all your soul, any type of uh, answers you're looking for is going to be given to you. Okay, so that's in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29. So we should be doing this all the time and, you know, knowing the word. And if you don't know the word, you should be reading it. And so like, you should be hungry. Like for all those who start, whoever started fasting, right? Think about if you've ever been like on a three day fast, you notice how you are starving for food. Like you can't, the only thing last day the, on your mind is this to eat. That should be the same energy when it comes to reading the Bible, especially if you haven't finished it yet. So number two is to consult with, with spiritually mature people. This is so important to have wise counsel and even the bible i got four scriptures it was like over like six or seven scriptures but i got four for you guys that you should have having wise uh, counsel okay this is in proverbs chapter 20 verse 18 it says every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war okay so whatever whatever um thing that you're whatever it could be whatever the answers you're looking for you know you want to make sure you have wise counsel around you next one up would be proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 says where no counsel is the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety okay so it's important to have someone who's above you like a mentor to, to put you on game to give you the knowledge to give you the wisdom what you should be doing someone who's spiritually mature especially when it's linked to the when it's linked to the kingdom of god or doing things righteously you definitely want to have someone who's spiritually mature next one up would be Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 to 21, it says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that they may be wise in the latter end, that there be that there be many devices in the man's heart, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Okay, so there's many devices in the man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Okay, so it says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in the end. Okay, and many people, guys, they don't hearken to instruction. They don't hearken to wisdom. And, you know, so it says that, so if those people who don't do that, they won't become wise. Okay, they're gonna stay fools. So if someone's if someone's giving the harsh truth, or someone's telling you to do something that's going against your program, but you know that person is skilled and experienced, you should take heed to his his or her words. Okay. Our last one up, Proverbs chapter fifteen verse twenty two says, "Without counsel, purpose are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established." So it says, "Without counsel, purposes are disappointed." So it's important to have someone above you to guide you, lead you, teach you. Now, of course, you want to have Christ above you as a man, obviously, but there's nothing wrong with having, that's what the Bible says, multitude of counsel. It's not, it's, 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 you know, having other people who will also have Christ as their head and are, has been in this walk for years, decades. I would love to get in, uh, instruction to those type of people because they have experience, okay? So you want to be seeking, when it, when it comes to getting an answer from God, consult with uh, spiritually mature people, okay? Not the people who are scoffing, mocking, tearing people down, those are the energy vampires. Those are the people who got demons on them. All right, number three would be go into prayer and fasting. Okay, go into prayer and fasting when it comes to wanting answers. Okay, so this is uh, Matthew chapter six, verse sixteen to eighteen. It says, "Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad face, for they disfigure, they disfigure their face that they may appear unto man to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But when thou hast fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face." And then when thou not appearing to man to fast, but you appear unto your father, which is in secret, thy father, which is in secret, shall reward thee openly. So sometimes when we fast and pray, uh, especially fasting, you're looking for answers. Fasting will help, it, it, especially if you're not doing it to be seen by man. You're not doing it to be a hypocrite, to appear righteous to other people. You know, fasting is to be something between you and God. That's it. Now, if someone comes up to you and, and keeps questioning you, why aren't you not eating? Oh, you know, let's go out to eat. And you say, no, what's, is everything okay? That's what they do. <laughs> just not, then you can tell me, yeah, I'm just fasting. I'm not, you know, trying to eat. But you don't want to, this first means that you don't want to be a hypocrite about it. Like you don't want to be like, oh yeah, I'm fasting. Oh, they're looking all sad. You know, you won't receive reward from God. Your reward will be from that person. Oh, he's righteous or he's fasting.
Okay, so if it, when it comes to getting answers from God, fasting will definitely help, especially prayer. We know what the Bible says: ask and you shall uh, ask, and it shall come to you. Seek and you shall find. Okay, number four would be patiently wait for God's time. Okay, this is something that I struggle with so much. Patience. That's probably we all have a weakness, right? For me, is probably. It would probably be patient, being patient. That's so hard. And the Bible says the fruit of the spirit is patience. But for me, sometimes, you know, I get impatient. I go ahead of God's timing. And that leads to a lot of trouble, uh, leads to confusion. It leads to doing things that weren't even in God's plan in your life. But if I would have been patient and waited for it, it, it you know, I would have got confirmation. I would have got answers. So many things I would have received. And it, it would have been blessed, but I, because I wasn't patient, I rushed into certain situations. I rushed into doing things that, you know, weren't even linked to God's will in my life. That led to sorrow. Okay, so when it comes to getting an answer from God and seeking answers, be patient. It could take you years. It could take you months. It could take you days. It could take you a few minutes. It could take you weeks. Whatever how long it is, being patient and waiting on God. Okay, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which pass all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Okay, so be impatient. Next one up is Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, and self control. Okay, so patience, 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 guys. When you gain an answer, do not rush. I'm telling you guys, learn from my mistakes. This is canceled. This video is canceled. Learn from my mistakes. When it comes to getting answers, confirmations, always be patient. Don't rush. Like I said, it could take you years to get an answer. Okay. It could take months, you know, and you got to be okay with that. If it takes a long time, you got to be okay with that. You got to accept that. Just be patient, continue in prayer, you know, maybe start fasting, get it into your word. You know, don't be like, you know, don't be, and the Bible says don't, you're not supposed to do vain uh, uh, repetition of prayer. So when you're praying, you're not supposed to pray for the same thing over and over again. God heard you the first time, now you just wait. And that's a lot of the times I would do that. Okay, all you have to do is pray once, God, you know, whatever it may be. And that's it. You don't have to keep on praying the same thing. God does not like that. Okay, next one up would be, number five would be to search. Search your heart for whatever hinders you from hearing God. Okay, so we know sin separates you from God. Okay, we want to sin, wolf, willfully sinning will separate you from God. Now, of course, if you do it once, it's not going to get off. But if you're like giving over to it, you got to be careful because when you're willfully sinning, or just no repentance and no guilt, no shame. You know, if you abuse grace, you abuse mercy, you're going to be giving over to a of mind. And that's going to separate you from God. And that's going to be hard to get the answer from God. Okay, so I got a verse for you guys. This is in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 9 to 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the hearts and I try the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. OK, so it says the heart is deceitfully above all things and wicked. Who shall know it? We have a lot of people who, t who teach you guys who tell people just follow your heart, trust your heart. But the Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. OK, so you don't want to be trusting your heart, following your heart. You want to be following the Holy Spirit. You want to be trusting in God, trusting in Christ and his word. OK, because if you follow your heart. It's going to lead you to sorrow. It's also going to lead to you being, you know, unpatient. Okay. It's going to go against your spirit with the, the fruit of the spirit. So always keep that in mind. You want to be searching your heart. Um, you know, what could I cleanse myself from? Even the Bible says this in Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 21 to 23. It says, for out of the heart proceeds um, sin and it defiles you. So you always want to be checking your heart. It's one thing God has really told me. Uh, especially this season, you know, every new season you're learning something. Like we all know about the spirit and having spirits, but it's also the heart. You know, it all starts in your heart first. Okay, so that's what the Bible says: to guard your heart, for out of it are the issues of in life. That's in Proverbs chapter twenty-three or twenty-four. Okay, so always be searching your heart for whatever hinders you from hearing God. Okay, so it could be, you know, if you want answers from God, maybe you gotta, you know, live a life of repentance or repent from whatever that's further you away from Him. Okay, and, you know, be more obedient. Number six would be ask, seek, and pray for wisdom, okay? Ask, seek, and pray for wisdom, okay? Um, we all know, like I said earlier, ask and you shall, uh, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, okay? And, you know, pray for wisdom. This is what the Bible says about um, 
people who lack wisdom. In James chapter 1, verse 7, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to, uh, that gives him all men freely and upbraid not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like the wave of the sea, driving with the wind and toss. For let not man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. I remember James, one of the first chapters in the Bible that I finished. And this verse like really hit my soul. Okay, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Okay, So that's what you want to be doing. You want to be having wisdom. If you don't have wisdom, ask God for it. And you want to be seeking wisdom with all your heart. You want to be seeking wisdom more than you seek out money, more than you seek out gold and silver, okay? That should be one of the main things uh, us Christians should be doing. Anyone who's a follower of Christ, you gotta be you know, having wisdom. Wisdom observes you. It gives, the Bible even says that wisdom gives life to him who has it. Okay, so wisdom is key. All right, so that's number six. Number seven, number seven is make sure what you are asking for is linked to God's will. Make sure whatever you're desiring, whatever you're seeking, whatever you want in life, is linked to God's will, okay? And if you're praying for it, God will hear you. I have a Bible verse to back that up. This is in John chapter 9, verse 31. It says, Now we know that God hear not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and do him his will, him he hears, okay? So if you're doing God's will, you're keeping his commandments, you're keeping the faith in Christ, okay? You're, you're doing your best to be obedient. Yes, you're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. But at the same time, at the end, when you go to sleep at night, you're keeping Christ first. You're keeping God's first. You're having the Holy Spirit and you're walking in wisdom, okay? When you're doing that, God will hear your prayers according to his will. Now, if you're doing the opposite of what, what I just said, okay, he doesn't hear sinners, okay? If you're doing something that's not linked to his will, he's not going to hear you. He, he, he hears people who are doing his will because he wants you to stay on that narrow path. He wants you to finish the race. He wants you to. So he's going to hear whatever, or he's going to hear whatever you have requests for him, okay? Because all linked to God's will is all linked to you receiving sal internal salvation. Okay, so these are the seven uh, ways how to get an answer from God. Number one is to seek confirmation to the Bible. Number two is consult with spiritual mature people. Number three is go into prayer and fasting. Number four is patiently wait for God's timetable. Number five is search your heart for whatever hinders you from hearing God. Number six is ask, seek, and pray for wisdom. Number seven is make sure what you are asking for is linked to God's will. I hope you guys got edified from this video. If you guys made this far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you wish and it's desire in your heart to share this video on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. God bless you all. I'm out. Peace.